Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Bama Mobs here. Thank you for coming in to another episode of Fitness with Bama Mobs. We're continuing the journey, and a journey it is. As most of you know, this started in the middle of April 2024. We're now in the middle of October, and I do feel better. I was weighing it somewhere between 220 to 224 pounds. Here in October, I've maintained a solid 210. Um, unfortunately, I've been at 210 for about two months now. So I think uh, we're gonna make another push here before New Year's. I'm sort of mixing things up. Um, I'd always done a lot of weightlifting. So, but again, the old saying goes, you know, if you're doing the same thing and getting no results, you know, you might need to try something different. So I did, you know, I'd always done, not strict diet, but, you know, try to stay with fruits and vegetables and such, but still, I was just getting so bulky, you know, heck, even my wife is saying, like, my thighs are like turkey legs, so it wasn't really the look I was going for, but was I strong? Yeah, no doubt, but yeah, the look was not what I was wanting. So uh, in April, I actually started uh, running at first, stupidly started running. You know, you shouldn't do that if you're like massively overweight like I was. And uh, quickly had some joint issues, pain that lasted for about a month, maybe a month and a half. Finally worked through that. And so now we're just uh, walking. Typically on my walks, I will do 10K. Yes, I will invest uh, two hours Know, into my workouts today's workouts probably just gonna be an hour i did a two-hour walk yesterday i really pushed it hard got 7.1 miles in two hours aiming for a 5k today in one hour and then we'll do a little 30 minute weightlifting workout but if you're starting out in your fitness journey or you know you've been in it for a long time i mean you don't need me to tell you the obvious yeah your workout time, you know, it does count, but it's really what you're doing those other 23, 22 hours of the day that you're not working out, where you're gonna get your results. And what does Bama Mobs mean by that? Again, Captain Obvious here. Yeah, you can't be eating honey buns, a lot of starchy bread products, and expect to lose weight can't be having a fatty cuss of meat every night and expect to lose weight. Or even to get into the fitness and the body form that you want. I mean, again, I'm just stating the obvious. Fruits, vegetables, broccoli, asparagus, sweet potatoes. I mean, that's where you're going to get your progress. That's where you're going to get, that's where the money is. If you can convert your diet to over to majority of that. I mean, you're doing great. Uh, protein, yeah, I'm not doing no bodybuilding program, weightlifting program. So yeah, I don't need, you know, one to one and a half times, or one to one and a half grams of protein per kilogram. Yeah, this body don't need that. Especially when you're getting older, get past 50 kidneys does not need to be processing that much protein. Again, there'll be debate on that. I guess the only thing I'll give on that is like, okay, if you're using it, you know, if you're lifting heavy, you know, hour, hour and a half per day, okay, I'm down with that, you're staying hydrated. Yeah, I get that. <coughs> but again, the diet is so important in this entire pro progress. And when I say diet, I don't mean it in the restrictive sense. Again, I mean it in the nutrition sense, you know. <clears throat> trying to get all your vitamins, you know, from natural sources. If you need to take a multivitamin per day, so be it. Get out in the sun for your vitamin D. Vitamin D supplementation during the winter time. All these things are very important when you're going on your fitness journey. Oh man, yeah, I imagine my miles today be right at 
19, 18, 19 minutes, taking it real easy today. Yesterday, again on that 7.1 mile walk, in the middle, I pushed it hard. And uh, my three miles in the middle were like a 16.05, 16.04, 16.03. I just couldn't break into that 15.50 mark that I was wanting to. But you know, that will come. As always, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, hit that notification bell. Leave your comments below about you know, what you do for your workouts. No matter how odd it seems, whatever works for you may be something someone else can benefit and incorporate into their workout. So any comments you leave are much appreciated. So typically, on a typical day for me, I try to get up earlier than this. Um, right now, I mean, I got it at like 1.30 p.m. I didn't go to bed till 5. I work at evening shift, so my body clocks off a little bit. Typically, the sweet spot for me is going to bed at 2 in the morning, 2 or 3 in the morning. That puts me getting up at 9 to 9.30 get my work work out in before noon get lunch and hit on with the day's activities so that's the ideal day for me and typically I do walk two hours every day I know a lot of you are saying it's like man you know, I'm just so busy you know I don't have time to do that and well I'll say what you're really saying is that what you're really saying is that, yeah, I don't have time to get dressed out and get myself mentally prepared to get into a workout like that. And, you know, having to take a shower afterwards. So it's not even a workout that you're complaining about. It's all the stuff that goes around the workout. And I got easy solutions for that. Uh, number one, and all the gym people's gonna hate me on this. Initially though, I would abandon the gym. I was a gym goer, a lot of weightlifting. It just wasn't working for me. I mean, I was getting stronger, bigger, big back, big rumpus, but that's not really what I was going for. So I have not worked out with weights since April of 2024. And I did thin out, I thinned out a lot of my legs, arms, uh, chest and back. You know, whatever was built up there is a little bit slower to shrink down. But I just now started back lifting weights this month. When I say lifting weights, I mean high reps, 15 to 20 reps, <clears throat> doing a multiple body groups at one time. And then the key when you start weightlifting is, yeah, that hunger is going to take over. You got to really control your hunger. And whenever, whenever you're like, hey, I know I gotta eat something right now, I wanna eat my hand off. Well, better have a head of lettuce nearby, some broccoli, asparagus. Cook, the, cook those bad boys up real quick and uh, choke them down. Heck, eat them raw. I don't know, asparagus may be a little bit tough eating raw, but definitely the broccoli. All right, we have gotten down here at the very end of the airport which is 0.6 miles and now we're turning back going back up the airport let me give you a little view of what i'm looking at yeah it looks intimidating at first you're like man i'm never gonna make it back man i mean it's gonna be dark before i get back i mean the animals are gonna get me just keep walking you'll get there you always do don't y'all love October in Alabama? I mean, look at this. It's 80 something degrees. Humidity's a lot better now. Sunshine. I mean, where else can you get a tan set for Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Tennessee? Well, not Tennessee, it's cold up there. Florida. But it's an everyday affair, you know, fitness. 
It's an everyday commitment. For me, it's two hours. Now, initially starting out, yeah, it was 30 minutes. I was just saying, hey, I want to carve out that time. And as I started doing longer distances, I found out, well, all I have to do is this. Multiple ways to shave time. Number one, eliminate TV. Yeah. I mean, it's late night now. I might watch a documentary on Netflix late at night. Um, cell phone use. Yeah. I rarely post on Facebook anymore. Uh, of course, I do YouTube. So I do put about an hour a day into my YouTube channel, which is fun. It's like a hobby for me. But I've just said that to say this. You know there's places where you can shave time to get into a workout. As always, I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Hit that like button. Take you like one second. Hit that notifications bell. And let's see what we're going to do tomorrow. All right, today's Friday. So we've got a big high school football game locally tonight. So I'm going to that. And then tomorrow is Saturday. The University of Alabama is playing the University of South Carolina in Tuscaloosa at Bryant-Denny Stadium. And it is going to be a spectacle at 11 o'clock in the morning. Because I really doubt it's going to be a sellout. People are trying to unload their tickets. I kid you not. In the lower bowl. You know, in the lower bowl where you're actually part of the game. Not an upper deck. Where you have your oxygen reserves strapped to your back. 39 bucks. Yeah, we're talking about an SEC game. Now, that was one ticket in the lower bowl that I looked at. I would say the average ticket price is 70 bucks in the lower bowl. The upper deck, it's not much more than a couple going to Wendy's to get something to eat. Yeah, I'm talking about 40 bucks and below for a single ticket on SeatGeek. So that is the uh, state of college football. I mean, they really don't care if you go to the game or not. It's all about the TV dollars, which is okay. It's okay for me, because now I can sort of justify going to an Alabama game. I'm sure you saw my video or one of my YouTube shorts a few weeks ago where I went over the cost of going to the Alabama-Georgia game. And it was a cost. It was just for one person. I can imagine taking your kid with you or family of four. I mean, it'd be like going on vacation. Yeah, I'm not going to make you go watch my YouTube channel, so I'll just tell you about it here real quick, and we'll wrap up the video. Yeah, so I went to the Alabama-Georgia game, September 28th. Big-time game now. Now, this is talking about a number two, number four matchup. SEC game, Alabama-Georgia arrivals anyway. Uh, we own Kirby, by the way. Donald Trump was there. He had F-35 Marine Aviators out of Cherry Point, North Carolina, buzzing a stadium. The Blimp was there. Laura Rutledge was there. The band, cheerleaders, everything. So basically, I went to a national championship game. So the cost on SeatGeek in the uh, corner of the end zone. I wouldn't say necessarily end zone. Okay, yeah, corner of the end zone. Uh, chair back seat, actually. Um, I think the price on SeatGeek was uh, 328, maybe 330, with the fees. The total price of the ticket, I think, was like 420 and 19 cents. 
Now that was with a 10% discount from SeatGeek. Because there was a lot of tickets unsold the day before kickoff because the prices were ridiculous. I mean, like for the zone where you have food and beverages included, plus your seat, air conditioned, those tickets are like 1200 one person. Anything 30 yard line to 50 yard line was 800 to to $1,000. But once I got to the game, it was a hard sell out. I mean, it's, you know, people forked out the money. And again, it was sort of like the Super Bowl, if you're an Alabama person. Or as close as you're going to get to Super Bowl. Because a Super Bowl ticket for one person averages 2000 plus. So anyway, so that was uh, the ticket. Uh, food, I think I had a couple hot dogs, souvenir cup. Which, believe it or not, who steals a souvenir cup? Yeah, when I got back to my seat, I really don't think, I guess it was the people around me. I mean... Who steals a souvenir cup? That's crazy, man. Anyway, so all my concessions at Bryant and Denny was probably about, I don't know, 40 bucks. I'll count gas. I have about an hour drive both ways. So I'll just say I spent five bucks in gas. Um, I went to the strip afterwards. No, it's not that. The strip is where all the clubs and the eateries are. They're at the University of Alabama where all the fans and students go hang out. So I probably spent 25 bucks, which I know a lot of you are saying, that's all? All you spent was 25 bucks at the strip? What did you drink? Like water? No, I have to drive, so yeah. I just had like, you know, one or two beverages and you know, when you gotta drive, you gotta be responsible. So anyway, bottom line, total price was $498 and some change. Yeah. One person going to a big time football game was 500 bucks. If I had anybody take with me, it would have been a thousand, a family of four, $2,000. And that's for a seat where you actually feel part of the game. I mean, I was close to the student section, close to the band, cheerleader section was probably on a 10 yard line or so. So you're really sort of part of all pomp and circumstance. Now I could have gotten a seat in the upper deck. Absolutely, um, those seats, I think the lowest was like 200, maybe 200, $215 range with all the fees on Seat Geek. You're busting out 300 bucks. All right guys, I passed the one mile mark. I enjoy taking y'all on this first little bit. See you in the days to come. Appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Get out today, get out in the sunlight, get walking, get y'all's tan on, and get fit. I'll see you later.